Decision Making 101, right? I've walked up to my ball, just missed the green, can't putt it, okay. no guaranteed result there. Gotta fly this, how do I choose what to do? Well, commonly people start to look at that end before this end, and that's the first mistake. What you need to do is start to look at the lie of the golf ball. Now, more specifically, I'd like you to ask the question, what does the ball want to do? Okay, I've got three different lies here. Now, this one is pretty much perfect. Nice fairway, decent amount of grass underneath there. That is gonna behave normally. Okay, we come up to this one. See the grass has burned away. It's a little bit firmer underneath. What does that ball want to do if I don't change anything, if I don't respond to it? Well, it usually wants to come out a little bit lower. It's come out a little bit faster and often a little bit more spin. These balls are a little bit firm, so spin's not really gonna happen a great deal. But you know, you, you'll get the idea. This ball in the rough, what's gonna happen there? Well, it's gonna come out slower. It's gonna come out higher because there's less friction. It slips up the face and it's gonna come out with even less spin. Okay, so normal behavior, lower, faster, higher, softer, less spin. Once you've ascertained what the ball wants to do, you can then start to look at the other end at the problem you face. Right, this, this particular shot is downhill all the way to the hole. Um, when it comes to landing spots, we'll discuss that in a second. But I just wanted to get this area so I can show you how the ball does behave differently. Using a stock shot, I'm not going to respond to how the ball flight changes. And I could, but that's step two. Let's see how the ball behaves. So we'll start with the normal one. Just to get an idea of what a stock shot is. Okay, a little bit short, not too bad. If I change nothing, play the same shot, this should come out just a little bit more speed on it. The flight's not gonna change massively because of the firmness of the cover of the ball. You'd hear a sound difference. Definitely came out a little bit more on it, got further down the hill, bounced, pretty similar spot. This one, all being equal, it's gonna come out slower, the rough's gonna slow the club down. There's not a lot of moisture in this grass, but it should still slip up a little bit. And even less spin, if that is possible. There you go, you see it really starts to pop up. Landed in a similar spot to the first ball, and it's made it past it, so it's worked over. Even though the flight was higher, came down a little bit steeper, still rolled out even more. All right, so that's step one. Let's move on to another shot and show you how to choose landing zones. Right, here we go. I've chosen a fairly uniform line of fairway. It's pretty flat at the bottom of this little bowl because we're going to look at what's up there. If I start to walk up, it's uphill, 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 all the way to the edge. I've got a flat-ish area that's maybe seven feet, one, two, just over seven feet long. And then here, it go over a brow of a hill and it runs down to the left. Down to the left, okay, so. Here's how you make decisions for your landing areas, right? I have a preference. Always on the green when possible. I just don't like to rely on fringes. They're too unpredictable, especially grass like this. The ball can go sideways, it can pop up, it generate a lot of spin, it's really gonna grab on you. Um, it requires a lot of thought and a little bit of luck. So on the green when possible. Second on the list, on the flattest area you can find. Okay, now that flat area needs to be big enough for you to land the ball on. It's no good choosing a flat area that's 18 inches long. You're not gonna hit it often enough. That one's seven feet, I should hit that. Okay, if you can't get flat, go up slope. Quite predictable, you can be aggressive with it. Down slope is last on the list. It'd be a toss up between landing ball on the green on a down slope or using the fringe. You've got unpredictable for the fringe and then you've got really hard to control for the down slope. So what we've got here, ball's gonna behave like normal. There's no complicating factors there. If I was a little bit further back, it'd be on a down slope, a little bit further forward on the up, but I wanted to make it pretty normal here so we can look at this end. Uh, plenty of grass underneath the golf ball. Should be able to do what I want with it. Now, the next question I'm gonna ask myself is, can I play my stock shot, land it on the flat area, and have it finish near the hole? If the answer is yes, I'm going stock shot all day. These golf balls are pretty solid, okay? That, my stock shot is gonna run by six, seven, eight feet if I execute it well. Because I'm going for the middle of that flat spot. I'm not gonna try and drop it just on the edge because then I risk the ball hitting that fringe and who knows what. So I'm gonna to have to add a little bit of flight to it. Okay, now the rule here is 
just add enough. Okay, I don't have to stand here and think, right, this needs to go up to the sky. I need a little bit more flight than normal to soften the landing, hit my flat area, should be fine. The further you stray away from your stock shot, the harder the execution becomes. If I make smart choices, execution doesn't matter quite so much. So we're just gonna go a little bit open. I'm gonna try and get it into that little landing area. And I say little, it's a good six, seven feet as discussed. A little bit to the right, see if we can feed it down there. It's just at the very front part of the landing area. It's just died on me a little bit. Now, really, I missed my spot. I missed my spot by two or three feet, took the pace off, it didn't make it down the hill. Let's go same trajectory. And go a little bit further up that area. I was a little bit tentative. Much further up. Okay, pretty good, four feet by. That was actually quite nice that one of them hit the very start of landing area. You know, it just missed the speed it needed on the slope. It carried another two feet, it would have rolled out another four or five, been pretty tight. Second one much further up the landing zone, you can see it stopped four feet by the hole. Both perfectly acceptable outcomes, wouldn't be upset with either of them. Let's see if we can get one in the middle of that zone. Now it's a ride on it. Ride on it, down to two feet for an almost tap in. Okay, so we've chosen the shot from the lie. It's dictated by how the ball wants to behave. We've chosen the spot and then decided how do I need to adjust to hit that spot? How do I need to change flight? and then execute in picking the most predictable possible selection. It's not to say there's always going to be one. Sometimes you're going to have one, two, maybe three options, and that's going to come down to your personal preference. Always try and play to your strengths, but be smart when you're making choices around the green.